we're back. We're here doing some more Rogue Trader. Um, we just completed the Dargona stuff, so we're heading back to our wood chip. Uh, some good fats there. Some good fats. Um, some, you know, some, I consider trickier fats. But, you know, your mileage may vary on them. And your builds. I feel like, I feel like my Abelard's are really good. My Abelard's are really good. And my Argenta is really good. Pascal is kind of. Um, Rit and Pascal are kind of. Yeah, you know, they kind of have. kind of serve purpose, but not like. best. Oh, I can see the. Yeah. He secured Dark Otis. Okay. Welcome back, Lord Captain. During your absence, we assisted the ground forces by coordinating their movements from orbit. Detailed casually, and the manager's reports have been submitted for your perusal. It is with deepest awe that I inform you that the timely intervention and the resilience of the world's defenders managed to break the back of the raid, which had threatened to turn into a protracted war. They're going to suffer losses, but the Hive has a sufficient capacity to restore the administrative networks and industries as expeditiously as possible. War remains intact despite the insidious blow dealt by the Xenos. I have been giving Skelander's reports that he failed to deliver in time. They indicate that the Xenos activity dropped sharply after you departed for the Sonorous Malefic Maleficium. Considering the scale of the direct on this raid, it is safe to assume that the Drakari used all their forces at their disposal. And we now require some time to replenish the lost losses. Without Achilles, we are blind to the scheming of those enemies of humanity, but our strategists are still hoping for a low on attacks and raids, which will allow us to gather our strength for a new conflict. Lord Captain, permission to report. Apparently, your wise like some mechanics have analyzed the state of their protector. They believe that thanks to your decisive actions, the acute phase of the crisis has passed. The domain of the Valencius dynasty is no longer facing dissolution and ruin. What's more, bringing footfall to heal has strengthened your position as a rogue trader. Lady Theodora would have been glad to have such an important trade hub come under her sphere of influence. It is an honor of such a resounding triumph. Dragonus, as the capital ruler of your dynasty's domain, is currently making preparations for the Magne Assessio, a grand ceremony of your public induction is heard for the Honorable Theodora von Valencius. Governor Drabstam has vowed to not, that not even the recent devastating and tragic events will be prepared to cast such a shadow over his most glorious occasion. I do not underestimate Dr Governor Drabstam's desire to find favor with your lordship. At this very moment, thousands of your subjects are clearing rubble, washing away bloodstains, and sweeping the streets, and transporting corpses to the lower sectors. The wardens have been tasked with clearing the ceremony injured and those who were burned out of their houses. They will be forcibly moved to the industrial levels. Rest assured, by the start of the festivities, the capital's wounds will be, if not healed, then well hidden under elaborate set dressings. The grills of Fox built into big just facelets out of store rattle right, that indicates a chuckle. <laughs> that much is certain. <laughs> that much is certain. But that's not all there is to it. There will be also be a reception, as well as other noble guests. The distinguished rogue traders Caliglos, Winterscale, and Incendia Quartorta will be in attendance. It will be a great honor for Dragonus to host three illustrious dynasties at once. Your servants wish to know your opinion on two matters related to the ceremony arrangements. The first of which is, what festive activities are to take place in the capital on the glorious day? I mean, let the poor be fed. That's what we're... So will appreciate your generosity, Lord Captain. We are never short of people in need. The second matter on the service mind is which two of your closest companions will be given the honor of standing by your side during the ceremony? I mean... We know who's going to be here. We know it's going to be. We know it's going to be. It's got to be Cassia. Great boon to the, for the navigator house or I mean, she's the one I guess of noble birth. And then we are taking companion. I mean, Abelard, my trusty servant. House, service of House of Ambulances will see this and continue with the dynasty's glorious traditions. I won't keep you any further. Thank you for your time, Lord Captain. I will see to it that your instructions are delivered to the goodness. The master of the ceremonies at the palace will report to you in the capital ready for your praise name. Uh oh. I want to see the throne turn again, man. It's the best part. 
Pascal's voice pours out his voxism crackles with thin ice under pressure. It is clear whether this is nothing more than static or an expression of some emotion understanding will understandable only detect Reese himself. Malachi, following the ominous size guidance, I requested permission to execute the report protocol that entails describing sub-optimalities within the recent operations of the ship system and subsequently proposing the appropriate course of action. I'm listening. Initiating exposition. With the Omnicide's blessing, I conducted several sessions of tech meditation in an effort to transpose the available data streams into a matrix of patterns. The data subject to, to the analysis comprised evidence of deviations in the operation of the ship systems and service services, as well as irregularities in the algorithms of the ship's logs. I have arrived at the following conclusion. The vessel's machine spirit is most extraordinary. A full cycle of sacred diagnosis was performed, followed by a complement, complement a ritual. <laughs> This ritual will force the spirit responsible for the recent events to reveal itself. Once it does, we will be able to understand its nature and take action cool to its nature. What kind of applicable to the to the entity that appears before us? Is if it is a machine spirit of great might, we must appease it and humbly ask for the, about the reasons behind its portent and suggestion on us. If it is an abomination of tech heresy, the complement of ritual will help us purge the ship of an unhallowed presence. Very well, let's proceed. You have my gratitude, Malachi. I will notify my tech comrades to begin the preparations for the complement complement ritual at once. Alright. Despite the resounding hum of the tech priest's words of prayer, the bridge feels unusually quiet. All sound sinks to the vicious silence. Vicious vis viscous. <laughs> viscous silence, like pebbles sinking into water. Malachi, my tech comrades have spent the assigned number of cycles in prayer and vigil. Everything is prepared for the complementary ritual of cleansing. Its commencement will require an authorization key in the form of blood of, of a Vaughn Blitz. So if you're ready, place your hand in the next Harper Gargoyle's receiving module. Okay, whatever. The familiar cold metal burns your palm. This time, however, the servitor's jaws, instead of really clamping down on your hand, merely squeezes it slightly. You feel a thin reveal of blood, hot blood beginning where the metal fangs have pierced your skin. The screeches and growls rise slowly from the bowels of the massive cogitator, as if a great beast is stirring awake. It screens in front of you flicker promotely. I like the fact that they're actually doing that out of sequence. It's like... It makes it... It just makes it seem better. <laughs> this is kind of out of... Like they're not in... Anyway. Key accepted. An active magnum purgation protocols. Suddenly, the vicious sound of the bridge wrapped in a tight cocoon. The glow of it screams down to the symbols on the fire laugh. Analyzing intrusion. Analyzing all. Lockout. Angeline. Prevention. Pascal, what is going on? The complement a ritual. Complement a ritual is proceeding as it did. Pascal's voice goes He brings his hand to his voice communicator in surprise. Exact stop. Quiet. No more. Hello. What do you say? No most are glad to be speaking. No most are here. No most have long been here. Why are we here? Where are you? We are Nomos. Well, that's helpful. Pascal uses his hands and mechanics to gesture at, at the silent box system. Silence, Pascal. Nomos wanted no disturbance, only quiet. <laughs> can you remember the poop sound too? Some, sometimes, some people, Nomos can do many things. We do not always know what or how. We did not know. We did not know we, we could make silence until now. We can stop now. Extraordinary. A priest pauses upon realizing he can speak loud again. Then he continues his strange equipment with extraordinary transmission jamming. Unknown protocols. What has been revealed to me is the omnicized glory or foul tech heresy. I must, I would like to. But what is no most? No data available, no answer. We want to know too. I see no, no such name in the archives. It is not among the names of Reverend Machine Spirits, but neither is it among the name among the known virus entities. The spirit is referring to our toils the complement ritual and the rites that preceded it. The spirit is troubled by them. Are you a... No most do not know. No most do not know themselves. The spirit may not possess self-awareness yet, but its capabilities we should. I'd like to start with a hundred cycle vigil at the cogitator of the radical communion. 
Vasco looks back and forth between the glowing of his greens and you, embroiled in some internal conflict. No most welcome learning. <laughs> Siri is referring to our toils. Oh, okay. What do you want for us? Are you a friend or foe? Nomos von Valencia. Vid screen blink and talk. Nomos von Valencia. We are your blood. Nomos are a sentinel. We awoke when the strange light invaded the ship. We protected you when you needed help. We escorted you when you were surrounded by danger. Nomos are movement. We carry you through the frightening, the waiting, the measureless. We helped you. We helped when our ailing heart was refusing to awaken. We asked for rescue. We did as you ask. The warp engine activation against all probability of an escape from the racket system. Category 3 miracle manifested by the ship's machine spirit, and the part about protecting. Was it during the cultist attack? We did everything to please you. Why? Silence on the ridge goes especially deep, almost painful. The haze of light around you think is the point of becoming practically tangible. Numbers ripple, numbers ripple across the vid screen to once. Why do you fear us now? I do not fear you. Shivers run up your hand, which is still trapped inside the cyber gargoyle's jaws. The servitor nods his head a few times, as if shaking your hand. His teeth rake your already wounded flesh. No one's so glad. No one enjoys understanding, too. Malachi, entities such as this one ought to be addressed using the language of sacred rituals and offerings. Your unskillful meddling bodes ill. The decision is required of you. Either the complement ritual is finished or is replaced by the rite of tech communion. In the first scenario, the NTZ Nomos will be banished, and the sacred data halls where the entity dwelt will be reset. In the second scenario, we will appease the entity and learn more about it. Okay, so... Right of tech communication. Okay. No, no most do not want to be banished. No most want to help. No most wants to understand. Let's start with clearing through. Yes, no most did that. Are you angry? We only wanted to understand to see how things worked. Asko says nothing for so long to begin to take almost as silence him again. When the last to take priest speaks, his box modulated voice trembles slightly. Understanding the essence of the entity is beyond my reach at present. The hypothesis spectrum ranges from the extreme of abominable intelligence to the extreme of the great spirit of the Omniscient Apostle. The right to take communion appears to be a reasonable solution. The right will make many si take many cycles, but it will allow me to come closer to identifying the entity and making contact with it. What can you do? No one's learned, no one's trying to think. Do you want to see? The cyber gargoyle slowly turns its head, dragging your hand along with it. Skull's eyes flash red. The scarlet gaze falls upon one of the monotonously chanted junior technomats. You blink and you an electric discharge erupts from inside the technomat skull. The crimson clad figure slops, slumps to the floor. Does it please you? Do you want us to do it again? N no. <laughs> no one's enjoyed communion. Malachi is our blood. Oh, that's enough. These are lame people. How can you kill them like that without rhyme or reason? Cyber Gargoyle tilts his head to one side of surprise. We stopped their functions. Do you not turn machines off sometimes? We do not need we do not know how to turn a human back on. Not yet. But after enough experiments we will. We are always learning new things. Alright, well, let's investigate it. No one wants want to learn what we are to. We'll add things to your life. Things that might help us help you. The decision is made. I will begin my preparations for the communion right at once. Many cycles of interaction with the entity no almost await me. But I welcome the new task and accept it from the Omnissiah. No most are glad. Malachi, will you speak with us too? We want to speak with we want you to speak with us too. Where Captain's body lacks the sacred implants necessary for tech community with the machine spirits code. But if such is your wish, Malachi can converse with you using lovely sound speech as he is doing right now. No most are glad. We have been lonely. Okay. Work is done here, Malachi. I will let tech comrades know that we were stopping the com <laughs> compliment a ritual. Thank you for appearing before us into Nomos. Okay. So that was odd. What have you been doing? We've been studying and observing, helping the ship when we can. So many mechanisms. They would have suffered without our input. The name is also known as is ready to know most, although we do not understand how. Okay. Well, I don't I can't I don't I don't think I can do the caches, or at least they wouldn't work for Okay, looks like we can level up. So 
Let's do that. I just don't really... I don't think he kills many enemies, to be honest with you. Alright, let's do that. Alright, let's see. Then we're gonna level her. Let's do that. I just wonder if I need to get him heavy armor. Oh, he can't right now. He needs more strength. So, I guess we won't. We're going to give him some of that right there. And then... I always kind of hate leveling, to be honest with you. Let's... Actually, that's not bad.
Okay. See that? Magenta. Okay, so what do we... Is that I guess? I don't know. Alright, Abelard. Do that, I guess. And then Cassia. Okay, and we got you too, which is good, but also unfortunate. Alright, let's do that. And then. Hmm. I think that I think the issues are barely in the in the thick of things like that. But. All right, let's uh, let's look at our journal. All right, still in chapter two. I figured that would have been it. I guess this ceremony does, which I'm assuming you get attacked at, but who knows? I must remember how it came to be. Press past. Alright, let's uh... 
let's start talking to people, I guess. I guess that's our next goal. Uh, who are we supposed to talk to? Helmsman and Voxmaster. So we're going we're gonna to talk to the High Factorium, because he's not one we have to talk to here. So I want to look at... I want to look at this. Uh, I hit the wrong button. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. I don't know what I just did. I have no idea what I just did. Okay, apparently I didn't do anything, thankfully. Alright. I want to see the shipping, that's what I want to see. Alright, so what do we get here? Medigan. Eh, that's pretty decent, really. Alright. Imperial Navy. I don't think there's anything. I don't really have anything there. Heavy stubber. Alright, I don't know who I really want to do that with, so I'm not going to do any right now. I'm inside, I don't feel like taking the time right now to do that. So let's see, who do we talk to here? Box master here. Alright. Lord Captain, the ship informed me of our imminent meeting. All Lady Theodora's journeys could be considered unusual. Her odysseys were always audacious. As for the words you mentioned, none of them sound familiar to me as far as I can tell. Except maybe the incident. I recall coming across this word in transmission several times. I think it was repeated by the former engine seer, the one who perished during Kunrad Poitbeer's uprising. He was describing it as the incident. Some Something quite unremarkable. Apparently, at some point in the past, the entire ship was hit by a massive system failure. All systems stopped responding for one fifth of a second. Most of the crew, including myself, as I was luckily on board at the time, did not notice anything strange, but tech priests are sensitive to such things. As I can tell you, Lord Captain, I wish I could help you more. I'll offer my apologies, Lord Captain, but such matters lie within the purviews of High Factum Grandmark. I am not versed in box communications. Then. Argus. Mr. Heinrich and Kellex expressed interest in our King Patient Stations in Fox Nest a short while ago. The interrogator appears to be well versed in matters of sacred technology and it worries me. Men of his knowledge and in his line of work is capable of discreetly planning his own devices in our system. We will be vigilant, Lord Captain, but you should try to be more careful as well. Alright. Let me go talk back to let me just go talk to him. 
Where is There he is. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Helmsman. Let's talk to him. Look, Captain, Captain Helmsman, Reaver at your service. Does the word epitaph mean anything? I probably missed it. Can't say they do, Lord Captain. Doesn't ring any bells. Then again, remembering all the places of the authority of went is epitaph incident. We always have heaps of incidents happening on board, but. Through my implants, I feel at one with the ship, and I can sense that I don't know when it happened exactly, but I, I started behaving differently. Became more responsive, livelier. Yes, livelier is exactly the word. And when you say the epitaph and incident, it's just don't on me. Pardon my bungled report, Lord Captain. That's all I got to say on that front. Alright. So that's done. And then now we need to talk to Dira and Abelard. Lord Captain. There's the words. Did I do this move? Ugh. Hmm. It is wise for a rogue trader to have caches where they can safely store important information. And utterly unwise to share the coordinates of such caches with anyone. Even one's most trusted associates. I'm afraid I do not know how to find the caches, but I can offer some help. Your predecessor used this numeric code to deactivate certain defense systems in her service. If I know Lady Theodora as well as I think, then I'm quite certain that she left her caches well guarded. In that case, this code will be useful to you. Maybe that's why I couldn't find this. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Alright. Lord Captain. Um, no, definitely not. No, I don't recall anything like that. Okay, well, you won't wrench out. Lord Captain. Thank you for not being much help, Lord. You've let me down. Is that deer? Okay, I thought she was over here. I just didn't see her. Yeah, right there she is. Deer sees your lips curving the smile, she nods something over your, her shoulder. It was just my nerves playing up. Something about our little saint doesn't sit right with me, and I trust my gut. Oh, sure, she seems straight as an arrow and as predictable as a hangover after drinking. But when I look at her, something about her makes my brain itch. We try to find the caches. After that conversation, I tried to listen to what was being said about her. Beyond the door. What I heard was strange. Blood in her past, twilight in her present, and something like a star leading her? But where is it leading her? I saw several roads, and all of them frightened me. If I knew, I would have told you. Hearing things clearly requires cooperation from the other person you know. But that cobra just hisses and spits its venom at me. I don't trust her one bit. Oh, yeah. You go ahead and tell her the wicked Psyka has divined something about her. She'll be so pleased and grateful, and of course she'll listen to what you have to say. <laughs> no, that would be pointless. And anyway, I'm not even sure what it all means. 
Maybe the danger is to her? Or maybe the danger is coming from her? Which is for? They mean nothing to me. They're just words. A whisper. So quiet, I barely caught it. Like a feather landing on a pile of down. Something about damned ambitions, antiquity. Terrible antiquity. And chance. Chance through it all. Oh, now I have a headache. And the stupid bloody whisper wasn't much help. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I haven't. Maybe I never will. But I'm not hearing random voices anymore. And I haven't been calling anyone from the other side. No. All that's done with. After what you did for me, I can't let you down again. Yes, sir, Lord Captain. We will. Me? <laughs> Not a clue, Lord Captain. I don't know who Lady Theodora would have told about a thing like that, but it definitely wasn't me. Why would you whisper that to me now? Why? Lord Captain, I don't know anything about Cash's or Lady Theodora's secrets, but the voices... The voices have just reminded me about something. I was once given the chance to try some real wine. Lady Theodora gave me some. Not just any old synthetic booze, but her favorite plonk. She always drank it in her palace. It was golden in color, and its name was Flame of Purity. <laughs> A silly name. But the flavor was so intense, and like nothing I'd ever tasted before or since. Apologies. It's probably not important, but I don't know anything more than that. Of course. Always at your service, whenever you need me. Okay, who else? Who else would have any idea about that? Argenta was here. Argenta was here before, wasn't she? Let's go talk to the Hellsman one more time. I just want to see. If, I mean, I'm not going to actually. If, depending on what he has, I'm, I'm just going to make sure. Okay, so nothing here. I didn't think there was, but Argenta is there. Lord Captain, your presence is welcome. And I wish to apologize for my prior coldness. After our first meeting, I was concerned that you would turn out to be another faithless offshoot of the Von Valancius dynasty, like. Like the traitor Conrad. But now I see before me a worthy leader and servant of the Imperium. I am glad to accompany you in your endeavors. Of course, my mission is all I can think about. Gladly, listen. Long ago, there was a blessed world. Thousands of stars covered the sky there. So bright that its denizens hardly knew the darkness of night. Thousands of rivers nurtured the soil. Thousands of gardens bloomed every spring. And at every moment, thousands of prayers were flying into the clear air, thanking and praising the Emperor. But one day, the people learned the meaning of darkness. Like a storm, accursed heretics who had sold themselves to the archenemy descended upon the planet. Shells flew from the sky that desolated whole cities and burned the gardens and filled the riverbeds with the blood of the faithful. Smoke and soot swallowed the skies and the thousand stars that had once shone over the world. Oh, 
Okay. Among the handful of survivors was one orphan who had watched all her family die and the garden she'd grown up in burn to ash. But in her heart, she knew the absolute truth. Just these three words. The Emperor protects. And knowing that, she never looked away from the black, terrifying, smoke-covered sky. There were no more bright stars to be seen. Except for one. The one star. The bright star. The silver star shone in the sky. And when the orphan smiled at it, the one star fell right into her hands. All the faithful in every corner of the continent who saw the trail of the falling star recognized it as an omen and went looking for the place where it landed. And they rallied together. And with the light of the one star, they found their salvation. Yes, that was the beginning of her hagiography. It is known that she lived on a world where heretics staged a terrible insurrection. They wiped out all life on the planet, except those whom Saint Argenta managed to save with the one star, and with the strength of her faith. After that, she traveled between worlds gripped by turmoil on her ship marked with a silver star, and brought hope to the faithful. Numerous accounts confirm this. Her coming helped people turn the tide of the war and wipe away corruption before the Imperium's main forces even arrive. Millions of people owed their lives to her, but the heretics, having realized their imminent defeat, sent the remnants of their forces after the ship with the Silver Star. It fell from the skies onto an obscure world. There are no definitive records of how old Argenta was at the time. In some chronicles, she's even called the Child Saint, but their credibility is questionable. Either way, she didn't live long, but she left a bright trail in her wake. Like a... F <laughs> if I only knew! Neither the hagiography nor the legends give a straight answer. Classical iconographers believed that the star turned into a banner woven from silver thread, which, when brought onto the battlefield, would shed light that blinded only heretics, but did no harm to the faithful. Most of them portrayed Saint Argenta as a girl carrying this banner. Others think that upon falling from the sky, the one star became a holy chainsaw which Argenta later used to strike down monsters and enemies of the Imperium. In some of the earlier engravings, Argenta is depicted wearing power armor with a silver star on her chest. One theological theory suggests that this armor was, in fact, the relic. Some even think that the One Star is actually the ship on which Argenta traveled. I feel that my undertaking will be fulfilled when I find the answer that has eluded the Ecclesiarchy for millennia. I pray we find the way to Salus Prime soon. The ruinous powers must be aligned against us. They stand in the way of faith. One day we will reach Salus Prime and stand before the gates of Saint Argenta's ship. I know it. I believe. If such is the broke trader's wish, Although there isn't much I can tell, I am the Emperor's daughter and his servant. What else is there to know? Okay. It is my pleasure to be candid. All right. So... Let's see. Let's go ahead and give this a save. I want to look at my journal here. It's like... So that's just a wait now. Let's see. Any management.
Okay, so we get stuff there. I didn't expect that. I didn't even do anything on this one yet. Alright, so I'm not sure where I want to go next, to be honest with you. I know that I, I, part of me wants to try to find those caches, but... Okay, anyway, yes, there's one here on... Trade complacency. to add. Just wondering, do we get more projects in the later chapters? I would assume we do, but I don't know. So I don't, I'm kind of afraid to do any more projects right there for right this moment, because I don't know if that one's one that I'm terribly interested in. Uh, anyway, we're going we're gonna to end it here. Uh, we're going to come back. I may, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure where, I'm not sure what I want to do here. Let's look at our map. Real quick. Like I can go do that or I don't remember where that was to be honest with you. I have to look at I can look at my journal here. Uh Kiva Gama. Gama, it's over here, isn't it? Yeah. So I have to go all the way over there to check that again. It's probably not going to find me anything. So I kind of hate to do that. But anyway, that's the, that's the decision for the next time. Um, we're going to end it here. And maybe if I can get out of the map. Okay, I guess that works. Uh, we're going to end it here. But we appreciate you joining us, and we'll continue this next time.